On this week's boiler tip, we're going to talk about venting the DA. When we're starting up a deaerator, we may open the vent to expedite the removal of air and oxygen from the deaerator. But once we're running at a sustained load, what's that vent doing and what should it look like? Um, that vent is still removing oxygen and air from incoming water. And so we have to have a perpetual loss of steam out that vent. So these valves are drilled to accommodate that. So most deaerators with a properly sized vent orifice are going to operate with this valve fully closed because it's not really closed. There's a hole drilled in that seat. Um, but the design conditions sometimes aren't the real world conditions. So it's not unusual for making up more water than we thought, than we were previously, for us to have temperature issues on the deaerator. And, and basically that occurs because if air isn't evacuated from the top of the deaerator, we're spraying into air, not steam. We can't heat stuff the same way with hot air that we can with steam. That's, that's why we use steam. Um, so the key is to eliminate what we call air blanketing if it occurs. So one symptom of that is that we'll have stable pressure on our deaerator because obviously that air is not collapsing on the input of water, but it's also not heating the water. So what we need to do is a test. If we manually open that vent, a little bit until we note an increase in flow at the at the deaerator vent. If we see that temperature promptly come up, and when I say promptly on a DA, that may be an hour, um, then we know that we weren't venting enough air. And, and that takes us to our vent. So if this vent was on the roof of the building, what should that look like in normal operation? Um, firstly, we want a plume. We want stuff coming out. If nothing's coming out, we're not getting rid of air. Um, a typical plume is gonna be about a three foot plume. And what we're looking for in that plume is opacity. Uh, we want to see the steam coming out. So if I've got cotton candy steam coming directly off the end of this vent and we've got two to three feet of plume, we're probably removing enough air. Um, the, you can overdo this though. If you see clear, a clear base on the vent plume, um, you know, four to six inches that looks just like air, then that means we're probably venting an excess amount of live steam. So we might want to throttle that vent back down until we kind of see an attachment of saturated steam at the top of the vent. Um, it's not unusual for people to overdo the vent and you've got a 20, 30 foot plume of steam going out. Um, you're going to do a great job de-aerating if the PRV can keep up. You're just going to be wasting a lot of energy. So we really want to optimize that vent. We do see, um, in some cases, thermostatic vent traps to help remove the air initially on startup etc. But generally it comes down to uh, a manual vent once we're operating. So if it's sized properly, this won't be an issue. If you find that you always have to crack it a little bit more to maintain temperature, maybe when you take that DA down, you re-drill that hole a little larger, um, field engineering. Um, but the benefit of re-drilling that orifice is that somebody can't go up and just say, hey, that valve should be closed because there's a hole in there and all of a sudden we're back in the problem of having a DA that's too cool. So we kind of want to make permanent revisions so that somebody randomly turning a valve doesn't disable our DA rate.